Hello everyone, it's Christy here from the Creative Eclectic. Happy Tuesday night. Um, hope everyone's having a fabulous Tuesday. Got lots to talk about tonight, so I'll just wait a moment or two and sorry I'm a couple of minutes late. Um, we'll just see how we go. Okay, so tonight we're um, following on from some of the stuff we've done in previous weeks. So I'll just wait a moment or two till people come on and hopefully there's more than just me um, watching. I'm hoping that it hasn't frozen. Okay. So today is the last day of celebration. So we um, are going to use one of the papers from celebration, which you've got until 11 o'clock Queensland time to put in your order, celebration order. Hi, Jody. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great day. Um, I'm just looking at the celebration brochure, which finishes today. And as I said, it, um, it's 11.30 Queensland, no, 11 p.m. Queensland time is when it finishes. That's 12 p.m. New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania time. Um, I think it's 9 p.m. West Australia time and 11.30 p.m. Um, South Australia time. I think that's, I think I've got that right. But, um, so tonight we're playing with the Dandy Designs 12 by 12 paper. And this is um, an item that you can get free if you put in a, an order for $180. Um, um, so it's got so much paper in the pack. We've actually gone four ways in a pack because there is so much of it. Um, there's something like 48 sheets. So if you've got some crafty friends that you want to share with, this is great for them. Hi, Rose. Hope everything's lovely down in your neck of the woods. Um, okay, so we're using this paper. Well, let me just bring it up a little bit closer. Um, so it's a really lovely paper. It's lots of pastels in there or subtles. Hi, Glenda L. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's have a look at what we're going to make tonight. So over the last few weeks, we've been playing with masks, right? So tonight we're going to make a gatefold card. Now I've been filming all afternoon, so my hands have got ink everywhere. I've got ink on my face. I'm a bit of a mess. My work space is a bit of a mess, but... Um, I wanted to play with these masks tonight. So, so far we've learned with these masks how to use our blending brushes. We've learned how to use embossing paste with them and layer them. So I'm going to show you another way that we can use them that's different again. So I've got two pieces of this Dandy Designs um, paper and I'm going to start with this one and this um, first up I'm just going to mask up my Dandy Designs paper. I've got a bit of masking tape and like I'm as you can see, I'm right into it today. It's only seven past six and I am 
We're really getting started. Being efficient, I think. Okay. So I'm put a piece of masking tape. I've got a bit of um, baking paper here. Um, on the other side is some gesso paint. But I'm just using that because I want to protect my work surface a little bit. I put a bit of masking tape on the back of my designer series paper so I don't move it too much. And I'm going to just use. Um, just line up my mask and I'm going to just put a bit of um, masking tape on this. Now, as I said, we've already used these masks in a couple of ways with embossing paste, with blender, blending brushes. But this is a different way again and people forget about this way and it's one of the easier ways. Hi, Kim. Oh, you found me. <laughs> Thank goodness. I don't know. Sometimes technology doesn't um, do what we want it to. So here I've got a Stamping Up Spritzer. Now these come in packs of two. I've filled it up with some... Diggers Isoprol Alcohol. Now, you for this technique, you can use this. You can use a bit of Isocol. Um, but I'm using the Diggers one or an equivalent of that. So this has a higher alcohol content than the um, Isocol. Now, the Isocol has around about a... 70 or 80 percent alcohol content okay and whereas this is 100 percent, so this is high alcohol um you can get that from bunnings or from um big w now i'm just taking the lid off now you'll see mine is um already tinted a little bit so i had some drops of Calypso Coral ink refills. Now I'm just trying to try and get this lid off without spilling. Okay, I'm going to pop a couple of drops. Now if you don't have ink refill, um, sorry, alcohol, you can use water but it's not going to dry as quick so i'm going to put four drops in there and i'm going to put my lid straight back on the ink refill because i have a habit of knocking them over and spilling them everywhere so how is everybody anyway i forgot to ask are you well Joni? and what about you glenda and kim are you all well so I've popped my few drops of ink refill in and I have, um, oh, Kim, I am using the celebration paper um, called Dandy Designs. It's on page 14 of the celebration catalogue. Okay. So I'm, today's the last day I can really use that. So... Now I'm shaking this up, just going to mix it up nicely. Hi Helen! Okay, so we're doing a few masking. Um, no Glenda, I'm glad you're good but I haven't recovered from retreat yet. Um, unfortunately retreat came right in a time where um, I had to um start taking a medication and it was um i'm allergic to antibiotics so i had to preload on antihistamines beforehand and they've left me a bit groggy so yesterday wasn't i didn't do anything 
Okay, so I've got my ink refill, uh, sorry, my spritzer, and it's filled with this alcohol. And um, I've put my drops of reinker in there. And I'm just going to spray it. Now, when you're using your spritzer, make sure that this little hole thing here, I'll hold it up a bit higher, is face down onto your project. You don't want it in your face, all right? And the higher up you hold your spritzer away from your project, the finer the mist will be, okay? So I'm holding it quite high up. We're going to do this for two on two different pieces. Now I'm just spritzing all over. Okay. I've got a handy dandy disinfectant wipe so I can just wipe this up. I usually would have um, some paper towel, but I don't have that around here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lift that mask off and you see it's got a very, very pale pattern. Then I take my other mask. Actually, I might just Give it a bit more. Let's add a, another couple of drops of ink refill to this. We want it a little bit darker than that, okay? So it's easier to start with less and add more. Okay, so add a few more drops, maybe about five drops. Put my little thing in, wipe off any excess around the top, and just mix it up. Because the ink refill is, um, it is lighter, uh, sorry, heavier than your alcohol, okay? Yes, Kim, they do seem to last longer. I've got, had some for years since I first bought them out, so, and they still seem to last. You need to wash them occasionally and, okay, let's spritz this up. We'll go fairly high. Now, when you do it closer to your project, um, it becomes more blotchy, I think. Okay, and you just gotta keep wiping off any excess. Now, there we go. So that's my patterned paper. I wanna add a little bit more detail to that. So I've got my other masks that coordinates with the first one. Remember a few weeks ago I taught you about these layering masks. Now we used masks at our retreat on the weekend with embossing paste and Vicky's project um, used those. So I'm just going to do a little bit more ink and see I had a few blotches so but that's okay. And it also depends on what angle, and I've got some where I don't want it, over here. Also depends on the angle that you use your spritzer at, of how blotchy it goes to. Now, I'll take that off. I'm gonna, this will dry almost immediately. Um, yes, Kim, you will see all the projects. Um, we'll take some photos and post those um, from the retreat. But we have got a few that um, we just want to wait until the people who have 
done it online, get an opportunity to do the um, the retreat at home. Okay, so we will share them. Okay, so I've done that one. I'm going to um, also with my other piece of paper because I had two pieces of this um, paper here. I'm going to pop that down and use my other mask. Okay, so what this does is it adds a bit of extra interest to the pattern. Okay, and see I've layered both of these masks together. one on here. I didn't put any masking tape behind that one. You don't have to put your masks on exactly straight either. You can put them on an angle if you want. But I'm not going to today. But let's just line these up. You can see I use these masks on the weekend because they've got my name on them now. Um, that's a problem when you do a big event, you have to have, everything has to have your name on it. <coughs> Excuse me. So what's the weather like where everyone is at the moment? Is it hot? Is it cold? Sunny? I know in South Australia they've had a few hot, very hot days last week. Okay. So we've got our spritzer again and I'm just going to, I think I've splashed it everywhere. But it cleans up pretty well. I'm just going to spritz this. don't like about spritzing is that it can be quite messy. I put my lid back on my spritzer and later on I'll label that and I'll just keep it for that colour. You don't have to keep it for the one colour. You can um, rinse it out, give it a good wash with some um, dish soap and then rinse it really well and you will get a nice um, clean spritzer that you can use with a different colour. Okay. So, and I will use this piece of baking paper again with another project. So I'm just going to pop this out the way. This protected most of my work surface, not all of it, but... So I have to clean up as I go because I don't want it to stain. That's the only problem is sometimes it will stain. So you just need to make sure that you clean as you go. Now because I'm using baby wipes, I'll be, oh, sorry, disinfectant wipes, I'll be dry in no time. So we've got our two bits of pattern paper. So I'm actually making two cards, the same design, and we're making a um, fun fold card. So you can very, I don't know if you can see it, very lightly see the um, white background in the, let me, trying to hold it so you can see it. Maybe if I hold it a bit further away, there's a, a white design on the paper and you can see it in the right light, otherwise it looks a bit, um, I think it's, yes, and it is a really good way to make your own background paper as well, like you can do it on, on cardstock. Okay, 
So, I've got my card base. Now, this is eight inches by five and three quarters because, as you know, I don't like to just cut my um, things in half. I like to have it a little um, smaller. <sighs> Oh, Janie, I'm glad you're excited to see the videos. I did four or six of them today. So, um, so that's why my hands are a mess. And it was warm here today. Yes, Kim. And it was warm, warm where you are. Oh, great. In the, uh, in the 30s. In the high 30s. Oh. Okay. So let's grab our card base. So what we're going to do is we are going to score our card base at two inches. So let's move this dreaded cutting blade out the way. We're going to score at two inches and then we're going to move it along and we're going to score it at six inches. Okay. So this will be a gatefold card that we're making. Okay, so that middle section will be four inches. So you've got two two inch sections either side and a four inch section in the middle. Okay. So we'll grab our trusty bone folder. And we're going to just Furnish our edges, and as I said, we're doing two cards. Okay, now I did forget to tell you the width of this paper, um, and it is let's just grab our it's dry now, so we're going to cut it, but it is three and three quarters by five and a half. We're just going to cut that in half. So half will be, so half on the short side will be one and seven eighths. Okay, so let's move that scoring blade out of the way. Okay, so that's one. And this one here is also going to be one and seven eighths. So just make sure it's nice and flush off the top. Okay. As I said, we've got two cards we're making. Now, because we've got our scoring tool, our trimmer out, we want to put together, do our scoring on our belly band. So our belly band is a bit that goes around the card and holds it closed. So I have already cut it at two inches and I've cut it two inches and eight and a half inches but you could make it longer than that and I probably if I was doing this again I probably would it's just that that was the I had eight and a half inches to play with so we are going to score it at now we're going to do our first score at two inches to move our um, cutting blade out the way. We're going to do our first score at two inches. Then we're going to move it along and you'll see you go past, sort of past the end. Now this is where you need to fold out your arm. And there's some scoring on the new stamping trimmer. There's some scoring marks there. And that's about six and a quarter inches, right? 
and we're going to score it at six and a quarter inches as well okay so that middle bit that middle section ends up being four to, four and a quarter inches wide okay so I've already done the other one and the other one has extra bits of scoring on it as I was playing around with it so that's not going to make a big difference. So what I'm going to do is you'll see that the scoring scorer put a line, a divot in it. So I'm going to fold it the opposite way to that like that and it will just sort of sit it doesn't overlap and that's okay. If you were doing it longer, it would overlap and probably give you a bit more integrity with your thing. Um, thing. So the other one, I'll just do it the other way on the other pattern. Mm, I think I'll do that one there and this one over here. Now, I've already started I've cut a whole heap of things out. So I've got from my layering circles, I've got a Calypso coral and a petal pink circle. And then from our stylish shapes dies, I've done a um, circle as well. Hi, Carol. Hi, Leanne. I hope everyone's having a really great day. All right. So now we've got our um, we've got our layers, and I've also started to do the inside of the card. So I've already coloured one, but and this is using the Friendly Names stamp set. Now, this is in the new mini catalogue, and um, I'm going to um, just um, grab my stamping blend. Sorry, I've had people messaging me all day today. Now, what I've done here is I've done all the dark colours already. Okay, so I've done dark um, soft sea foam. I've done some dark um, so saffron, dark petal pink and dark calypso coral. Okay, so now it's a matter of going in and doing all my light areas. So I have got, we'll start with the leaves first. And I'm going to use my blends. And I didn't, um, oh, you stood on the coast, Carol. Oh, I'm glad you're watching me while you're on holidays. Okay, so I'm just going to colour in my leaves. Yeah. And I'm not really blending them, I'm just colouring them. Okay, I'm going to add a bit of colour on the grass. Oh, and the stones are dark crumb cake as well. So I've done all my dark colours beforehand. Because really you don't want to watch me colour for hours. You just want to see how I'm putting this together. Well, and as much as I find colouring relaxing, I don't find it relaxing when other people are colouring. Okay, and I bought, for some reason, I bought up my dark petal pink, but we're going to go with that. I'm just going to, I don't know where my light petal pink is, so... We are going to mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to put 
put my dark petal pink down on my um, mushroom. And then I've got my light so saffron. So I'm going to change things a bit and go over the dark petal pink on the stem of the mushroom with the light so saffron. And see, it completely changes the colour. Okay. For some reason, I don't have the light crumb cake up here either. <sighs> right, so I've done light flowers as well. I must have picked up the wrong one. Now, every time you colour, you can do things differently. You don't have to do it the same every single time. I'm actually going to, in the centre of my flowers, which I've already got some dark, so saffron on, I'm going to put some dark pumpkin pie, just to make it a little bit different. And I've got started layering my um, mushroom with um, dark calypso coral. So now I'm just going to start blending my light calypso coral and I'm going to go over those bits that I've done in petal pink as well because I want to change the colour of them. Because I'm going to blend both my petal pink and calypso coral with some pumpkin pie. Just to make it completely different to the other one that I did. Because I don't want to be boring, really. Okay. Now, I love the gnomes. I loved the Christmas gnomes, and I love these gnomes as well. Now, for some reason, I don't have the... Um, the right colour crumb cake up here, so um, I might do the door in pumpkin pie just for something different. So I've just done the spots in light pumpkin pie, but I am also going to go over them in dark pumpkin pie just to make it a bit different. Make it stand out a bit. So the door will be the same colour as my spots. If I had my colour lifter up here, I could lighten the colour even more. But, yeah. And I'm not even blending it. I'm going over the whole thing just for something a little bit different. And I've done the inside of the window I'm doing in Pool Party. Okay. So. There are my two insides of my cards. Okay. I think I probably do like this one better. But let's go over that... Um, these spots in pe light petal pink now. Actually, no. Light, light so saffron. Let's see if that makes them a bit different, a bit lighter, a bit more of a contrast. 
And because there's so much ink, it's not um, lifting the ink as well as it normally would. So probably what I should do is let it dry and then um, go from there. But it's not looking too bad. It's just lifting the colour. And I love that you can mix all of these colours up. You don't have to use... Um, can, do I ever use blender pens with my ink pads? Um, yes, I'm not, they're not my favourite, so, um, and I'm a bit out of practice. Right, so, yes, but I do, and maybe that's something that I need to do on a live sometime soon. So let's pop these over here. Okay, so I'm going to grab out. My new Boho Blue um, Mini Stampin' Cup Embossed Machine. And the reason I'm showing you this is if you have a big order that you want to put in, you can join Stamping Up tonight and you can choose to get one of these exclusive blue cutting machines for free as part of your well not for free but as part of your joining offer so you get a blue machine valued at $110 plus $315 worth of stamping up products for $210 so that's a really good deal if you don't like the blue you could have a white one or if you don't want a mini machine you could get $315 worth of products for $169. So that's a pretty good join deal. And it doesn't obligate you to do anything. But what it does give you is at least a 20% discount on all your purchases from Stamping Up. Okay. But you could join, never put in an order and it wouldn't be an issue. Okay. So we're going to create a little sandwich with our thing. So we've got our white number one plate and we've got our number two plate. Now we're going to stagger our number two plate in a little bit from the edge of our number one plate. This just gives the embossing machine or the cutting machine something to grab hold of. Then I'm going to pop my little gnome on here now it coordinates with the dies from the kindness gnomes stamp set which came out at christmas time no in the christmas catalog so we're just going to pop this on and I've got a piece of washi tape, I think. And I'm going to pop my washi tape over it because I don't want it, my dye to move. And then I'm going to put my top plate on. So, and line the top stagger the top plates okay so that it gives it something to hold on to but it's not too thick for the machine so the very top plate and the very bottom plate are together and the second plate whoops i've got two number two plates the second plate is um not lined up now you want to Make sure they are aligned. Okay, and it goes through nice and cleanly. See, that, that wasn't too hard. Some people find this machine a little bit hard, so they need to stand up when they do it. Okay, I'll just take off my, very gently take off my washi tape. Because I've got another little gnome to cut. Now, this gnome, that I, first gnome that I cut... 
I'm not sure she really coordinates because she's Highland Heather and um, Soft Sea Foam and Petal Pink and Calypso Coral. So she's a mishmash of colours. But let's... It gives you a good idea. The other one I've done in Calypso Coral, Petal Pink and... Um, Soft Sea Foam and Pumpkin Pie with a Highland Heather flower. But I think this is all cute. Now we're just going to stagger this. Now try not to, when you're using your cutting machine, don't cut in the very centre all the time. Move your dies around. And the reason you want to move your dies around is because it's prevents the dies from bowing. So on Saturday when this machine was used for the first time, I actually wasn't the first person to use it, um, the people, you can see from the plates that when it was used, they put the dies in the same place just about every time, which means that it bows really quickly, okay? And I didn't line that up terribly well at all because I've cut bits off. But she's okay. I'll have to redo her, but we won't redo her now. Okay, so let's start putting our project together. She sort of does look like she's ready for Halloween. Yeah, it's not quite Halloween time. So we also need a sentiment for this um, as well. So I'm going to put the sentiment on the inside. Now, because we are using the gnomes and it's a, um, what do you call it, a um, photopolymer stamp set, we need some sort of foam behind it. I'm going to grab my deluxe um, Stamparatus net and a piece of grid paper. Oh, Jodie, your son had been got bag balls everywhere. Oh, dear. Done that before. So I've got a piece of Stamparatus squid paper. And I could do this on my Stamparatus, but I'm going to use my blocks. And I've got my, grab my block out of my carry case. I think that one should be big enough, I think. Usually my go-to block is block D, I think. But today I'm experimenting with a different block. Um, so, actually I'll put it Right on this one, I'm going to have one as a birthday card and one's going to be like a housewarming part card. I'm just using some um, Memento Capsido Black ink. I know my ink pad needs re-inking. Let's pop this on the inside. I don't know if that's very straight, but looks pretty good to me. Then I have got just took that to the outside because I want to clean it. And then I'm going to use the 
Gnome Sweet Gnome on the other one. Now the beauty of stamping is that you can always, if you make a mistake or get it crooked, you can always um, cover it up. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. Now the other thing I want to put on our little white circles are, I want to put a balloon on each of them. And we're going to colour that in. So I'll grab out my balloon stamp. Now this is why I should have grabbed a block D. But that's alright, we'll grab a different block. Now, I do find blocks. Block D does for most things, but this one is block H and it fits nice long skinny things better. So I'm going to um, so this is a stitched um, circle. So I'm just going to pop the balloon so it's inside the stitching. Okay. There we go. And on the other one, I'll put it, the balloon on the other side. Now I also want to put some little um, bits of grass on the front. Grass? I think that's what you'd call it. Plants? I'm not quite sure what you'd call it. And I've got my little tiny block, block A, I think. And I've got some soft sea foam ink. And I'm just going to pop a couple of little bits of grass along here, along that bottom edge. Okay. Same on the other one. Are we all still here? Sorry, I haven't really been asking too many questions, but a bit of grass. And we're also going to put a bit of that grass on this here as well. Just down the bottom. I'm just going to put three bits on and I'm going to use my soft sea foam stamping blend to colour them in. Yes, you did tell me that, Kim. You're still here? Yes. Um, I hope that the bank sorts it out quickly for you. I would be changing banks if it happened too often, really. Um, once is enough. Okay, so I've got my soft sea foam stamping blend and I'm just going to blend those in. So see, I haven't used Memento ink with the blend and that's quite okay. Okay. Because it sort of um, wanted it to blend in. So 
even though I've coloured some of it already, it is taking a bit of time to colour. And I really hope that you like these finished projects. So, um, they looked really good in my head. And I'm not worried about um, blending them with the dark and the light. I'm just doing a light. Normally, if I just had one colour, I'd just use the dark. But today, um, I think that the, the dark is a bit much. It is a bit dark. I just want it very, very subtle. Has everyone had a good week so far? No, nothing is safe and secure anymore. Glenda, no, you're right. It's, um... All right, so I'm going to do... Add in a bit of a different colour with the pumpkin pie. So what I'm going to do is just on the one edge of my balloon and the top edge, so the bottom edge, and do a couple of really light flicks up like that. And same with up here. I'm hoping you're not seeing the top of my head. A couple of light flicks up. Okay, so we've got a bit of light pumpkin pie and we're just going to start blending that. So I'm doing a circular motion and what that does is it draws out the, um, it mixes up the, the light and the dark. And then I'm just going to go all the way across. Now you could leave that little thingy there clear or with nothing in it. I think it looks fine like that. I did think about doing the other one in Calypso Coral, but I had the pen out, so. And it's really rough and dirty colouring, really. Nothing too technical about it. Just layering up the colours and pulling it down. And what, what having that dark at the bottom there does is adds a bit of a shadow. Okay. All right. So we've done all our stamping. We've done all our colouring. Let's put these babies together. Okay. We have... They are use, easy to use. Um, oh, dear. They... Um, the blends, they are very, very easy to use. So, let's start with the insides of our cards first. So I'm going to grab my um, stamping seal. So this is a brand new one, so hopefully I don't break this one. I am, am a bit heavy-handed, so I seem to get them caught up on themselves. Um, so yes, blends are worth the investment. You need to be really careful though and make sure you put the lids back on properly. And they're much easier to use than Copics markers. And I can say that because I'm an accredited Copics teacher. And um, I think that they are so much easier to use than Copics. So we've put our inside in. We're going to close up the front. 
we're going to pop our DSP on our little gatefold panels. Now, we, if you were late, I gave the measurements at the beginning. But um, so you can always catch them on replay because I can't remember what they are now. Um, hi, Laura. Um, you don't use alcohol with them? With, well, you don't put them on alcohol, no, Kim. You, that would be... Um, that's not the way they're designed to be used. Okay, so we're just going to pop up this. So that's our, so we've got our DSP that's been coloured with the masks and the spritzes. Now let's put together our little, um, these little, this little thing here. What do you call it? A belly band. So this one, I think I'm actually going to use the stars for both of them. I think that will look better. So, as I said, I only had an eight and a half inch, eight and a quarter inch, half inch piece of paper. So, what I'm going to do is just, so I, I didn't overlap mine because I didn't have enough paper. But in the centre of my scalloped circle, I am just going to pop some snap a seal. Okay. Then I'm going to add some dimensionals and put on a petal pink piece. So I'm picking up the colours of the um Spritz the paper and the um, ink refill spritz that I used with the mask. Okay. Now, I am going to pop that one on like that. And this one, we're also going to use dimensionals on that. It's a bit like Oprah. You get a dimensional and you get a dimensional and everybody gets dimensionals. Is that right? Um, I should have done that at uh, when we did our all attendee giveaway at retreat on Saturday. Oh, so those who are, don't know and didn't see my video, the retreat... Um, yes, the darker one is Calypso Coral Kim. The retreat that we did, we raised through our ticket sales of raffle tickets and the um, also the ticket sales for the event and the lucky envelopes. We raised a thousand dollars. We actually raised a little bit less than that, and then we had a couple of donations that brought it up to. One of them was a $32 donation, which brought it up to our $1,000. Um, so we're really happy with that. Um, I am actually astounded. Like, it was such a good thing. So this one, as I said, I've cut her a bit bonky. So to fix that, all I'm going to do... Just grab my scissors and cut a bit closer, right? Um, yeah, so we were really, really happy and it was a great day and we, um, I'm looking forward to our next event, which will be the last Saturday in October. So save the date. Um, we don't have any details of that yet, yet for as of the venue and all of those things. Um, it might even be at my house. It depends on what we can get and what's available. And um, But we certainly will be using the caterer, Rhonda. She was amazing. The food was so good. And she sent me home some dinner. So that was even better. 
Yeah. Oh, Jodie, you, you swag should come tomorrow. That's good. That would be good. I'm hoping my new passport comes tomorrow. That's it. good. Um, so the all attended gift was I'm not gonna tell you, Jodie, because you haven't got your swag yet and it was in your swag. Um everybody who bought a mystery or a lucky envelope got to pick from the table which had mystery prizes. And um, so they were all wrapped and they didn't know what they got. And where they could might have got a stamp, they might have got embellishments, ribbon, but everybody bought lucky envelopes and we had 60 of them. And I think we gave away about 30 prizes. So um, everybody got at least one prize. Some people got three or four. But that was really fun. And then we had lucky draw prizes, which even the people who were crafting at home were entered in. And, but all the attendees got a prize. And we had what we called a golden ticket. And the golden ticket, um, we had prize patrols. So everyone got a number and they... Um, got when the number was called out during the day they got a prize patrol um prize and, and Jody yours will be in your swag and um because we know what number you had and then one person in their bag their swag of goodies and it was someone who was in the room um they won a golden ticket and so the golden ticket got them every prize patrol that was given out so we had six different prize patrols so they got all six of them so that was pretty cool um oh goodness jody i can't remember the names of everybody who got them I think there was Kerry, I think. No, Sandy and um, yes, uh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head who got all the prizes. That was two days ago. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to line up my pattern. Okay, so... But let's see. And um, I think Elizabeth might have got a. Um, Elizabeth is doing hers at home as well, and I think she got a lucky door prize. Um, but I know that um, Shauna, who flew up from Melbourne, she won a major raffle prize. And that was quite funny. And we did that li that draw live. Um, we had intended to do the lucky draw prizes, lucky door prizes live as well, but time got away from us. And I've just messed that up. Oh dear. I think that's about right. Okay, All right, so we've got that. Oops, he moved. That's dreadful. What sort of a Mickey Mouse thing was that? Well, I mustn't have scored that one properly. We're just going to go with it. Some reason that's not sitting right. I must have scored it crooked. That's what happens when you do things in advance, isn't it? Because you can see it's overlapping when it shouldn't. But anyway, you'll get the idea. I'm not going to spend 
an hour trying to fix that because it's not going to fix the way that I want it. So what I'm going to do is just hope that that's lined up down that end like that. Okay, that's a bit, sort of a bit better. Maybe. Anyway, let's just put that aside. So we've got our second belly band. I'll pop a piece of this stuff off across the middle. Now tonight, I even managed to have dinner before I came on. It did come off. Oh, Kim won a raffle prize, yes. Um, that was pretty cool. I was pretty chuffed with that. Um, two Rachels won a raffle prize. Shauna won two raffle prizes. Um, she was a bit embarrassed by that because she was helping me draw them out. And... Um, she drew hers and I said, oh, I'm not going to let you draw it again. I'll um, draw it and then I drew her name out. So um, I'm not quite sure how that happened. But anyway, um, it was nice since she travelled all that way. And she managed to get it in a suitcase to go home. So that was even better. So it's really exciting when people come from interstate or from a long way. We had a couple of ladies come from the Gold Coast. Um, it was their first time stamping, so there was the three of them, and um, we had people come from all over the place to join us for the day, and we really loved it um, and had a lot of fun. We learned a lot of things as well, so that's always good when you learn something, when you're... Um, hosting an event so that you can do things better the next time. So we learnt that we need to do videos beforehand and not rely on technology on the day because that the technology and live streaming didn't work because Telstra um, decided not to work properly in the... So the network kept crashing but that's okay all right so we've got our second little gnome there i'm gonna flip that over the top there so you can't really see that i've sort of messed that up so what you want to make sure when you're doing these belly bands that they are bigger than that back section okay i've got some embellishments here these were from the mini catalog now they are have been carried over so i'm just going to pop a couple on here just because i can i might do about five of them They're quite, they don't stand out too much, but they're a nice um, bit of extra texture. It's a perfect colour though. Thank you, Jodie. I thought they were pretty cute. They, they turned out almost like they were supposed to in my head. So, um... That's always a good thing. I'm going to pop this one over here, I think. So we've got a nice odd number of embellishments. We've got our five embellishments on this one. I'm just going to put three on this one in the petal pink. Because I've only got three left, so that's why we're only using three. Okay, so tonight we've spoken about the how to use a mask with the spritzes. We've also talked about how celebration ends tonight. 
And so if you want to, anything from the Celebration Catalogue or anything from, um, if you wanted to join using the offer, you've got until 11pm Queensland time. The other thing that I need to quickly talk to you about is a new thing that starts tomorrow. And we'll just quickly go over this. So there's a new product being launched tomorrow and it's an online exclusive. So what that means is that um, the online exclusives means that you won't find it in a catalogue, right? And it will be while stocks last. And it doesn't mean that if you wanted it and you don't shop online that you can't ring me and say, Chrissy, can you order this for me? It just means that the only place that you will see it is online. So this new online exclusive has the Irresistible Blooms stamp set, which I didn't order, and the, the matching dies. It has some gorgeous paper. Now, I was really lucky. I was gifted some of this paper um, because it's a six by six and it is so pretty. Not um, colours that I might usually use, but you might see some retired familiar colours in here such as Tranquil Tide and, oh, look at this paper. And you might also see some Pretty Peacock. So last week I talked about, oh, in my newsletter, I talked about um, that the Colour Refresh is coming and so they will be looking at the, sorry, Lost Lagoon, yes. What did I say? I don't know. Lost Lagoon. That's right. Not Tranquil Tide. Um, anyway, um, you might see some of the returning colours, uh, some of the old colours coming back. You'll also see some new colours that you haven't seen before so that are all come out in the new catalogue. So look at those. Aren't they just beautiful? Oh, you got the whole suite, Jodie. Oh, lucky you. Oh, there's a couple more pieces that I missed. Look at that. That's just stunning. And then, oh, look at that paper. You know, all you need is a stamp, really. And you've got a gorgeous card made of this. But then, the other paper that I was also gifted is this specialty designer series paper now there are six sheets in a pack and two each of each sheet so there's a silver a gold and a copper how gorgeous are these oh glenda you're waiting for your sweet to come it also has some embossing folders it's a pack of three they are gorgeous and these really cute little dots. Now, don't make the mistake that a lot of the demos made and go, oh, they're supposed to be adhesive back dots. They're loose, so they stick on with either glue or a glue dot. But they're so pretty. And oh, they're just stunning. So they are... There's 360 of them in the, that little container. Or maybe not anymore, but yes. So they're just gorgeous. And they go beautifully with the paper. So that, that is released tomorrow. So um, I'll have a post on my blog about it. And I'll also have um, some samples to show you next week. Um, I think that is everything for tonight. Don't forget Mystery Stamping is on Saturday. I'll post a clues tomorrow. Um, everyone have a really great week. Thanks for joining me. And until next time, happy creating and bye for now.